Leslie Wall. Welcome to our Faith Through Fiction Summer Special. Summer is a great time to enjoy a good book, but with so many fun reads available on our site, how are you guys to know which ones make great summer reads? Well, TM and I thought it would be fun to ask the Catholic Teen Book authors to suggest a book from their titles and explain why it makes it the perfect summer read. So whether you're on vacation, playing at the beach, relaxing at the pool, or lounging on your patio, don't forget to make it an adventure with one of these fantastic summer reads. Let's get to it. The first up is A.J. Catapan and her book, The Seven Riddles to Nowhere. Seventh grader Cam Boyd has trouble fitting in. He suffers from selective mutism. But he has finally found a school where he feels comfortable and has made some great friends. Unfortunately, financial problems now threaten to close his small Catholic school. Then a letter arrives with an opportunity to change everything. Cam learns that he and several others have been selected as potential heirs to a fortune. He just has to solve a series of seven riddles to find the treasure before other students, including the school bully. If he succeeds, he'll become an heir to a fortune that could not only keep the school open, but keep Cam's hopes for recovering his voice alive. So what makes this such a great book for the summer? Well, it's all about adventure and friendships. A.J. Catapan does an amazing job of creating this treasure hunt through the city of Chicago. The characters have to solve riddles and visit churches in the Chicago area to find clues to the treasure. Her descriptions of the Catholic churches are so great that I felt like it was almost another character. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Chicago, but it is a really great place, very cool city. There's just so much to do there, but if you visit, don't forget to ch check out the churches featured in Seven Riddles to Nowhere. Next, we have Cynthia Tony and her book, Three Things to Forget. Now, all of Cynthia's books remind me of relaxing on a front porch with an ice-cold glass of lemonade. They are just a delightful treat full of Southern charm. But we asked Cynthia why she thinks this book is a perfect summer read. And she said it's because this book is about a teen who tries to escape her past by traveling 1,400 miles away from home. Starting her summer in Alaska brings old friends back into Wendy's life, but also new friends and wolf pups at a wildlife conservation center. Will they all help her forget the mistakes of her past? Well, I couldn't agree more with Cynthia. This is a fabulous book for summer, since the story revolves around the main character's summer vacation in Alaska. Cynthia has a knack for creating really interesting characters in unique situations, and she always does a beautiful job with descriptions in her books. I was actually in Alaska last summer, so reading this book took me back to all those wonderful memories. This is the fourth book in Cynthia's Birdface series about a teenager named Wendy, and it is a great one. You'll enjoy them all. Okay, next up is Carolyn Asphalt and her book, Rightfully Ours. 16-year-old Paul Porter's relocation to Pennsylvania is a temporary move during his dad's deployment, or so he and his brother think, until devastating news lands on their doorstep. Paul's new home with the Muellers provides solace, especially in the form of Rachel, his friend and confidant. Their abiding friendship deepens as they work side by side to uncover what could be lost treasure. Will they acquire the strength of character and virtue to take only what is rightfully belongs to them? Or are they in way over their heads with more than a few lost artifacts at stake? When asked what makes this a great summer read, Carolyn said 
the heart of rightfully ours takes place during summer vacation. Long, hot days, a summer wildflower garden, summer jobs, and living out of doors. Well, that is a really perfect description of the book. In fact, the long, lazy summer days she describes with the beautiful gardens and the anticipation of adventure made me wish that I lived out in the country on a farm. This book is not only enjoyable to read, but brings up some important discussion questions for older teens. In fact, I think this would be a fabulous book for a book club, for a group of friends searching for a fun way to spend more time together this summer. Okay, next is Teresa Linden's turn. Her choice is her book, Anyone But Him. Teresa has a lot of fantastic books, but she chose Anyone But Him for her recommended beach read. When asked why, she said, the beach scenes make anyone but him a great summer read. And here's a little excerpt. Okay. He bowed his head and traced a heart in the sand. You ever feel like, like you're standing on a cliff and, and God's asking you to fall off it and into his arms? Ah, I know, I love this book. This is part of Teresa Linden's West Brothers series. Uh, this particular book is actually categorized as new adult because the characters are a little older. But if you're a fan of her books, you have got to read this one. I don't want to give anything away, but the book starts with Caitlin, who's a character that has been in all the other West Brother books. She wakes up realizing she has amnesia and doesn't remember anything of the last few years. Worse yet, she discovers she is married to someone she doesn't remember ever liking. In fact, as far as she remembers, she can't stand him. She begins a journey to try to figure out what happened to make her lose her memory and how she could possibly have ever married him. If you know anything about me, you know that I love mysteries and I am a sucker for a sweet romance. Well, this book has both and an incredible pro-life message. What more could you want? Okay, time for my choice. And I'm going with my book, An Unexpected Role. Okay. After a humiliating event and overwhelming peer pressure, 16-year-old Josie flees her home to spend the summer with her aunt on a South Carolina island. Her fresh start turns into the summer of her dreams as friendships grow, romance blossoms, and a series of thefts surround her with excitement. However, when tragedy strikes someone close to her, Josie realizes there are more important things to her than her reputation. As she sets out to solve the mystery she has become entangled in, she not only realizes the importance of relying on her faith, but along the way also discovers who God wants her to be. So why does this the summer perfect read? <laughs> the perfect summer read? Well, because it takes place in the summer on an island. And hopefully the summery beachy descriptions will transport you to that, that island with Josie, where she meets some really interesting people, a family of immigrants, an elderly military veteran, a Hollywood producer, and two very handsome young men. This book is a mystery with humor, sweet romance, and faith, all rolled into one fun adventure. And a little bonus, one of my sweet dogs, Kalua, is actually a character in the book. I had a blast writing this one, so I hope you enjoy it. Well, that is my half of the recommendations. TM, what do you have for us? Hey, Leslie. Thank you. What a fun, faith through fiction segment. Summer is my most favorite season. And I do love to add a good book and a glass of iced tea to a summer day. So let me share more recommendations by authors. Now my first one is by Andrea Jo Rogers, Saving Mount Rushmore. It reads, when John Jenkins' parents ship him off to stay with his aunt, He's certain it will be the worst summer ever until he learns he's been accepted to a top secret school. 
St. Michael's Academy is home to gifted students with extraordinary talents. Although John has no idea why he's there, he's assigned to Team Liberty, who assist authorities with low-level crimes. Their first mission, stop a trio of mischief-making teens from vandalizing Mount Rushmore. John battles feelings of inferiority as he and Team Liberty compete against Devlin Black and his cronies to track down clues and solve puzzles at Mount Rushmore. Along the way, John makes several key contributions and his self-confidence grows. When he discovers he was admitted to the school due to a clerical error, he's mortified. Now, he's strictly an observer until the mission's end. But when his teammates run into trouble, John must summon up the courage to try to save Mount Rushmore. And he learns an invaluable lesson. Every person has special God-given gifts, including him. Now, Andrea suggested this story because summer usually means a cool vacation somewhere, right? And this is an action-packed summer vacation that you will never forget. Now, if you love a little Christmas in July, like I do, yes, I watch the Hallmark movies. How about Treachery and Truth by Katie Huth Jones? 10th century Bohemia, the Dark Ages, in the shadows of paganism and, un and an unquestionable thirst for power, the flame of faith and loyalty is threatened. Sinners, servants, and saints make the choices that will ultimately define them in this intriguing tale of deception and truth. This is the true story of good King Wenceslas, the story of Vaclav the first, as told by Poitavin, the servant who accompanied him. Treachery and Truth is a historical novel filled with the tension between betrayal and belief, godlessness and goodness, selfishness and service. Now, Katie says that this book makes a good summer read because the reader can travel to a distant time and place on a timeless adventure, no matter where they are this summer. Now, if you're a fan of dinosaurs, here is one for you. This suggestion is by Karina Turner and Eek. All right. So I'm not very good on my handy dandy Kindle, but I'm going to try and, okay, <laughs> this is pretty bad. All right, this, I'm not even sure if you can see this image and if you can't, I'm sorry, I will be showing images of all the books at the end. Can you even see this? This is probably really ridiculous. You can probably see all around my porch rather than this cover. Sorry, Karina. This is the breach cover. That was horrible, wasn't it? Sorry. Anyway, we'll just bypass that and pretend it never happened. And instead, I will read to you the description of breach, if I can find it. Oops, I think I pressed the wrong thing. Wait, 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 don't, don't give up on me yet. Seriously. This is why I like paperback books. Okay, here we go. 18-year-old Isaiah and his older brother, Zechariah, are professional hunters, earning their living culling and capturing some of the most dangerous predators ever to walk the planet. When an out-of-control T-Rex breaches a tourist resort, Isaiah and Zech must act, act fast and save lives, or to save lives. Little does Isaiah know that a, zest, that a, that a testy T-Rex and three packs of hungry raptors will soon be the least of his problems. A much-regretted New Year's Eve misadventure is about to cause a very different kind of breach and change both their lives for good. This is Hot of the Press, my friends, and Karina suggests this as a great summer read because it's a heartwarming, pulse-pounding, life-affirming adventure that's perfect for a lazy summer day, and I would definitely agree with that. Now, one of my suggestions for a fantastic summer read, of course, is Secrets, Visible and Invisible, and actually it's recommended by all the seven authors that contributed to this story. 
and I'm going to just give you a little brief of each of the stories. The first one by Karina Turner is The Underappreciated Virtues of Rusty Old Bicycles. In a dystopian future, an innocent picnic turns deadly. The second story by Cynthia Tony, Recreation. Elijah knows nothing of an elderly stranger's secret past until her disappearance changes everything. Now, the third story, The Portrait of the Firestarters by Teresa Linden, a mysterious, ever-changing painting alarms a group of teens. The fourth story, On the Brink of Hell by Susan Peake, the cannonball took Dario's legs. Will he lose his soul too? Number five, Sister Francesca. This is my story. Uh, the arrival of a mysterious girl challenges everything about Jason's life. Number six, Behind the Wheel by Carolyn Astbelk. An unlicensed driver, his dad's truck. What could possibly go wrong? You'll have to read the story to find out. And finally, More Precious Than Gold by Leslie Wall. An old tale of murder and forbidden love leads to a modern day treasure hunt. Now, this anthology, I believe, is a fantastic summer read, not just because they're quick reads, but because they include reads with a splash of summer fun, such as Cynthia Tony's recreation in which high school graduate Elijah spends his summer vacation doing good deeds, and Leslie Wall's More Precious Than Gold is also a summer vacation story at a summer camp and involves a fun little mystery. <sighs> Yes, life is good. And both my story, that's from Teresa, by the way, she interrupted my video. And both my story, Sister Francesca and Karina Turner's The Underappreciated Virtues of Rusty or Bicycles both involve a summer picnic, although with much different outcomes. Okay, so finally for my suggested summer read, the Destiny of Sunshine Ranch. Now, I recommend this story, and I'll read it to you. Ten-year-old Benedict has been moved from one foster home to another, and he's hated every one. When he arrives at Sunshine Ranch, he doesn't even bother unpacking. What's the point? But his new foster parents and siblings are very different from what he's become used to. Both David and Martha Creedon strive to instill love and Christian values in their family, and it inspires hope to each foster child. Benedict is not into religion, however. Sunshine Ranch is the home he's secretly been yearning for. Still, he fears it's all just a little too good to be true, and his sentiments are validated when he learns that they may lose their home. Can the Creedon's children help save the ranch? Will faith keep them together? Or will Benedict's dream be shattered? The Destiny of Sunshine March is a story about a family devoted to God. It relays the personal journeys of all the Creedence foster children and their struggles to overcome past and present pain and, adverse, and adversity. Now, if that doesn't grab you, I don't know what will. This story is the perfect summer read because it includes summer day adventures like fishing, camping out, hanging out on the porch, building a tree house, and a variety show. What's that all about? Read the book. I think you'll like it. While every day is a great day to read, summer vacation affords us a ton of chill out opportunities where we can just grab a book and a glass of iced tea and be a part of an adventure. And because all the titles at Catholic Teen Books are faith-filled, they're constant reminders of how important it is to keep God close to our hearts, no matter what we're doing. I pray that you enjoy the titles that we've shared with you today and, they, and that they had fun and adventure to your summer. So grab a cold drink, pick a comfy spot in the sun, in the shade, whichever you prefer, and let the adventures begin. And that's it. Thanks for joining us for Faith Through Fiction. Next time, until next time, check out more of our exciting, edifying titles on Catholic Teen Books. Like us on faith Facebook, follow us on Twitter, and sign up for our monthly newsletter. From me, T.M. Gowett, and fellow Catholic Teen Books author, Leslie Wall, have a fantastic summer. Enjoy the weather. Have an adventure and God bless.